the best child in the world, but he was my child. And I loved my child. On May 11th, 2019, 34-year-old Jarmel Perkins was shot and killed in the 2000 block of Plow Lane in Chesapeake. Jarmel was only five days away from his 35th birthday. At around 1 a.m. that night, Chesapeake police responded to the area of Plow Lane and Shady Lane after receiving calls for an injured person in the roadway. When officers arrived in the area, they located Jarmel in the street, where they observed that Jarmel had suffered a fatal gunshot wound. Another bystander had also been shot and was transported to a local hospital where they were treated for their injuries and survived. When officers arrived on scene, there was a large crowd outside in the area where the shooting happened. Investigators were able to determine that there had been a large house party nearby and that when Jarmel arrived to the party, there was an argument which turned deadly. One of the difficult elements of this case are that there were numerous witnesses on scene when the shooting happened, but very few people have come forward to actually share information about Jarmel's case. There was a large crowd to the point where people were parking streets over and walking to the party. So we know that there were many people out there, but yet only few people came forward to share what they saw. He had to be afraid of him because you shot him in the back and in the back of his head. And I guess everybody out there must be scared of you. And I think, and I see into my heart, I believe it's someone that he called friend, cousin, or bruh, because he turned his back on him. And everybody else afraid of whoever that is, because no one, not a single soul, have said a thing. I mean, he was so funny. And he was a sweetheart. He really was. He loved playing basketball. And he liked cutting grass, and he loved hanging out with his friends. He loved his family, but he loved his friends. And it's sad that he didn't have them, not one that night. Yeah, I live for minute for minute. I don't go, I don't live day by day any longer. I live minute by minute. It's, I lost so much weight. I. I just can't, you know, I just can't imagine my life without my son, without my baby. I go to the funeral, I mean, to the cemetery a lot. I'm really angry and hurt. Will you please come forward? Before I leave this world, I just wanted to know who took my son's life. And I know that you all know what happened. And my mother's health is declining more and more every single day, as well as my stepfathers. If you know something, please, just please, give them justice before they close their eyes. That's all I ask. Tell a friend so they can tell a friend so they can tell a friend and they can get back. Somebody, please come forward. You know, because it's just, it's, it's unheard of that it was so many people out there and nobody has said nothing. My brother has been hanging in that neighborhood since he was about six years old. And there's no way in the world that they would see somebody kill him and not say anything. I just, I, I don't understand it. We wanna remind everybody that even though this crime happened a few years ago, tips can still be submitted to the crime line, which is completely anonymous. You can call in, submit a tip, via text or even online. Or you can call the Detective Bureau and ask for Detective Robert, and I can speak with you over the phone about what you may have observed. It may be something very insignificant or small. However, it may be the one piece that helps us put everything together to help solve Jarmel's case for his family, his community, and his friends. And I'm just asking if you all will please come forward and, and just Tell who done it. Maybe the killing will stop out there. It's been about 10 more guys murdered in, in that neighborhood and in one more place. And it's gonna continue going on unless you all talk.